wanted to know what happens to the sequence over time. Let's wrap and find out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and now we have an opportunity that people even 30 years ago didn't, right? Okay. Well, my first thing probably would be if I'm sitting at a computer, I would plug this function into Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I put parentheses around the top and the bottom, or I put it into my graphing calculator, or if you're you know, your phone has a, uh, an app that does this. I hear there's a, a $3 app that does it really well. Who's going to shell out for a $100 calculator? No one. <laughs> um, Texas Instruments is doomed. Uh, so, you know, basically the first thing that you might do is you might graph it. Okay? So you come up with your graph and you say, long term, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, well, we're sort of looking at what the height happens long term. The second thing that you might do is you might plug this into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And you might have the first column of your spreadsheet, column A, you might have one, two, three, four, five. And the second column, you might have, uh, you might have this formula, right? If this is the cell A1, the formula that you put in here is equals parentheses six times A1. That says six times whatever's in this cell. Carrot two, that's going to square the second thing, plus two star A1 divided by three Oops, I have open parentheses, three star A1 carrot two minus four star A1 plus two, close. You're gonna press enter on that, it will compute it. Then, and incidentally this whole thing will disappear. And in its place, you will get, let's see if we plug in a one here, we get eight on the top, and one on the bottom, which would be eight. Then you'll take this little button, if you put your cursor over it, there'll be a little button in the lower right hand corner. If you click and drag it down, you'll get that formula all the way down. Pretty handy, you can sort of see what the numbers are doing. These two things, it's just easier if you say, go, look, I made a video of clicking on it online, and you can just do it. The thing that's probably better face to face to talk about is algebraically, how do I think through that? So. Algebraically, let's say these ways give us a pretty good intuition, but there are functions and sequences that your intuition is not quite going to cut it. It's going to do weird stuff, and you really need to go back to here and figure out, okay, what is mathematically going on? So one of the reasons we're doing this is because there are times when even the techniques that you have, the tools you have, aren't going to answer it. The second reason is because this uses basic algebra skills, and part of our goal for this class is to hone your distributivity, you're dealing with fractions, and you're dealing with exponents. So we're going to practice and practice and practice those, and here's another opportunity. Right? So what are we going to do here? Well, my problem is that n squared is going to get really, really big as n goes to infinity. I don't really want an infinity on the bottom. I don't really want an infinity on the top. So if I want to get rid of an n squared, how do I get rid of an n squared? Root n, n three. Uh, well, if I took the, the root, that would sort of just leave me with this. If I square root it, that would just give me n. Okay. So that, that would still grow, though, right? So if I have an n, how do I, how do I undo an n? 1 over n. 1 over n. So if I have an n squared, one, oh, 1 over n squared. We're going to multiply by the yes, bottom half, basically. Yes. So basically, if I want to get rid of this, I'm going to multiply by 1 over n squared. And the beauty of math is that you can do virtually anything you want as long as you're even-handed. Mm -hmm. It's very democratic. Um, we've divided by 1 over n squared. But if I put a 1 over n squared on the top, this whole thing is 1, and I don't change the value of this thing at all. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because no matter what value of n you plug in, if you plug in 1, 
you'll be multiplying by 1. If you plug in 2, you'll be multiplying by 1. So that's pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to multiply this out, and we get great joy to practice our distributivity. So who wants to do the top for us? We're going to distribute this with every term on the top. Who takes the top? <laughs> See, this is where I'm like just completely lost. Okay. Well, let's let's sort of back up. How would you sort of get comfortable with this? What I would do is I would sort of put in numbers. So if I were uncomfortable with this, think about if you had numbers here. If you had two plus three times four, right? And so I've just replaced these chunks with numbers. You could probably do this. In fact, hopefully there's yeah. two ways you could do this. One way is you might add those, mm -hmm. you get five, then multiply by four, and you get. But in that case, we can't, four. so we have. You can't do that, but there's another rule that you know here. Multiply them each. You get we could multiply well. them each, which is called. Distributivity, okay. So 2 times 4 plus 3 times 4, that's 8, plus 12 is still 20. Honestly, if you're teaching fourth grade, this is what you're teaching. But the whole reason you have to take this course is because if you don't teach this in fourth grade in such a way that they can do this later, you're, you're really hurting your students. So what you want to do is you want to say this using words that will generalize to that. Okay. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got this. Go ahead and give me the first term. Six. Six, perfect. So notice we've six. got n squared times so one like over n squared. Doing six plus two over n? Yes, okay, so let's see plus 2 over n. Notice I can't resist pointing out that this also is something that they should see first with numbers, right? The first thing that you might see with numbers, let me just look at this calculation specifically. Let's say we had 6 times 2 times 1 half, right? Well, that would be the first place somebody would see this cancellation, this reciprocal. And it would be really tempting to just sort of get them comfortable with this but not use language that would keep them comfortable because we know that n squared and 1 over n squared are reciprocals, so they cancel, right? And by cancel, I mean they multiply to 1, which leaves this unchanged, okay? So what we're doing is, is strangely fourth grade <laughs> on speed. So that's the top. How about the bottom? Three. Three. Minus four over three. Okay, let me rationalize in my head. This and this are reciprocals. Okay, so I've got three minus four over four. two. Or four, four over, over n. n. Four over n. And plus we get this lovely two over n squared. Two over n squared. Okay. And you might say, well, gee, now I have more of a mess than ever. However, it's a good mess. <laughs> That's what I always tried to tell my mom about my room, too. And she never believed it. But hopefully you guys will believe it. Okay? So why is it a good mess? Because we know that n is going to infinity. What's happening to infinity? What's happening as n goes to infinity with 6? Staying the same. Thing Staying the same. Exactly. If you're 6 and n gets big and gets small, you do nothing. So that, that's good, right? So It'll stay put. What about 2 over n as n goes to infinity? It's going to get smaller. smaller. That's going to get smaller. In fact, it's going to go to? Close. To Nothing, zero. almost. To zero. Yeah. So this term will disappear, right? It will become zero, and right? 2 over and, n squared disappears faster. And this disappears faster. This disappears, right? Mm -hmm. But as long as all of those disappear, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say the entire thing goes to, okay, that arrow is going to say, it's not that this sequence ever equals 
what I'm coming out to. But it gets close to that. Okay? So, uh, let's see. The top goes to 6 plus 0. The bottom goes to 3 minus 0 plus 0, which is 6 over 3, or 2. And you switch back to an equal sign. I switch. So this is actually equal to that. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah yes. That makes sense. So the way I would write that is I would write the limit as n goes to infinity of 6n squared plus 2n over 3n squared minus 4n plus 2 equals 2. When you have this limit, that's not saying a particular term in the sequence. That's saying the end of the sequence, actually.